All right, in an effort to troubleshoot my uh, temperature woes on my 300SD 617 engine, I decided to go ahead and replace the engine coolant temperature sensor. Here is the old one. Now, if you take a look at it right off the bat, you'll notice that this sensor says FAE. That's the brand. And I've got a couple of numbers here. 25F... Uh, 32220. Okay, I don't know what all that means. I ordered a supposedly genuine uh, Mercedes part from uh, Pelican. And the numbers on this particular, well, you can see right off the bat, it has the Mercedes logo. And then it also says uh, 120 degrees Celsius. Anyway, I'm just curious about all the numbers here. So, and then we have 801 slash uh, 20 slash 1, I believe. And the Mercedes number that I'm seeing here on this guy appears to be 105521012. Anyway, none of that is really of any importance. This sensor that was already in the engine doesn't appear to be, well, it doesn't appear to be stock. It looks like somebody changed it in, at some point in the car's life. So maybe even troubleshooting the issue that uh, that I'm I'm working on. So. Uh, one thing I will note right off the bat is that uh, there, the dimensions are a little different. The um, the genuine Mercedes part that I just purchased, uh, the probe seems to be just a hair longer. All right, so let's do a little uh, impedance check here. So let's go ahead and get our meter on there. All right, so this is the new one. That's 565 ohms. All right, let's move over and we'll uh, check the original one i scraped off a bit of the uh, where is it there it is i scraped off a bit of the uh, oxidation or whatever you want to call it so we're going to get that point and make sure we have a good connection there looks like it's 600 and you know 48 somewhere in that neighborhood all right we've got our brand new mercedes official mercedes coolant temperature sensor installed uh, just so you know, when you do this, you're going to lose a lot of coolant, so you're going to need to refill. I lost, uh, well, there's not much left. I think I lost, I think I lost about three quarters of a gallon, something like that. But uh, we're going to let the system bleed out. I've already removed the upper radiator hose, lifted it up, and poured Cool it down in the, in the top of the engine that way. And then uh, still, it looks like I need to top off the overflow tank again. So we're going to let this thing heat up and see what our temperature situation is going to be like. All right, we're doing this late in the evening because, well, that's when I'm doing it. Anyway, so we've got the uh, car back in the road. We've got coolant. Uh, topped off. We've got the heater on. I've got hot air coming out, so I've got all my air bubbles out. Uh, since I refilled all the coolant and uh, temperature is starting to come up a uh, fair amount here so we're looking at I don't know probably around 65 or 70 and uh, I'm gonna take this thing on a little uh, on a little drive here for maybe 20 or 30 minutes this evening my goal is to avoid this temperature needle from getting up close to the 90 to 95 C mark which is where it likes to sit personally I don't think the engine gets that hot. I think it was an erroneous signal. But hey, we're going to see how it goes. A couple of minutes later, it looks like our temperature is coming up close to the 80 mark. As several people have commented on my videos about my temperature being a little too high on this car. I'm just trying to fix that. Everybody keeps saying 80 is the mark. It should be running at 80. So that's my goal here. And uh, let's see how it goes here. All right, see, did you see that? You see that? You see my needle jobbing up and down like that? That needle does that. Why does it do that? Is it my gauge? Can you guys see that? You guys thought I was crazy, didn't you? Come on, stay in focus. All right, more later. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep monitoring it. 
it, uh, it went back, it went up and then it came back down just a touch. So we're gonna keep on monitoring. All right, so my temperature gauge rapidly went up to the 100 mark just a moment ago. We missed it getting, we missed getting it on camera, but it went, see it's going up to 100. So that's nonsense. That's, this car is not running at 212 degrees. It's just not. 212 Fahrenheit is, well, you guys can do the math. Anyway, and see it pops back down. So, you know, I, uh, I'm beginning to wonder now whether or not my, uh, my temperature gauge here in the car is, well, it's just probably just flaky. All right, I'm calling it a fail. The temperature sensor replacement did not fix our issue. And there you go. Running at the 100 centigrade mark. Out here on the highway, running 65 miles an hour. Bull crap! This car is not running that hot. I call bull crap on that. All right, so for a little experiment, I have increased the temperature of my climate control to maximum, and I've turned the fan wide open. Now, in any car, this would normally decrease the coolant temperature indicator. But there we are sticking at 100. I think the gauge inside this, I think it's clear now that the gauge inside this car is faulty. Even if the fan clutch was completely broken and the fan was freewheeling, you would not have that temperature tonight because it's like 50 degrees outside, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a very cool evening. So, I think we're going to have to do some troubleshooting on our gauge in the car.